Welcome back, everybody, to the Retrograde here on Dead Jester Cinema, where on this episode, we are going to dive into the 1981 classic, My Bloody Valentine. Now, I fancy myself a horror movie fan, but ashamedly so, there are a lot of horror movies that I haven't seen, and My Bloody Valentine has been one of them. So, I'm actually kind of anxious to get into this movie, so without further ado, let's go! Beware of what you make fun of, you little asshole! My Bloody Valentine is the story of a love triangle between our main characters TJ, Axel, and Sarah. You're acting like a couple of jerks. All while the town of Valentine Bluffs is reinstating its traditional Valentine's Day dance after a 20-year hiatus. All right! And that was all due to a mining accident where some douchebag supervisors decided to ditch their employees to go party it up. Where not soon after, a convenient explosion and cave-in killed all the miners except one, Harry Warden. <coughs> who more or less went insane and then returned to the town a year later to kill the supervisors who were responsible. And the legend says that every Valentine's Day since, Harry Warden lurks around town, ensuring that that dance never happens again. <laughs> and now, 20 years later, when the town, its citizens, and horny youth want to put that past behind them, old Harry Warden returns to ensure that they never forget that bloody Valentine's Day. Assholes. Now that is an interesting concept for a kind of low-budget slasher flick from the 1980s, but I do have to admit that the story itself is fairly shallow and it is fairly derivative. I mean, you get yourself a holiday, you get yourself a legend, and you got yourself a horror movie. But I will admit, I do love how hard this town goes over Valentine's Day. All those years of elementary school arts and crafts finally pay off. Additionally to how derivative this movie is, it does take a little while to get going. This beginning and middle are really slow and it is a bit of a slog to get through. However, once they get to the mine at the end, I feel like the movie finally starts picking up the pace and that's where I personally have the most fun with it. Now the direction is fairly basic, even by early slasher standards. There's nothing really that stands out, or is that remarkable? But if there was ever a setting that could lend itself to interesting visuals and lighting, it was the mine. But they don't really do that here. Now, I'm not going to say they took the cheap way out, because films like Black Christmas and Halloween were filmed on the cheap as well, but their cinematography was on point. Here in My Bloody Valentine, uh, it, it just feels a little lazy. I like the look of the killer, you know, his whole mining getup. It definitely has a unique look. And there's some really cool kills here too, like when he kills the chick in the locker room, or killing this guy who looks like a young Wilford Brimley with a nail gun. And you know, special props to the gore effects too. I think this movie kind of gets overlooked in that department. However, I will say a lot of those gore effects I had to go back and look up later because the movie I was reviewing, I guess, was the original US cut, so a lot of those were omitted. But the one kill that does feel the most out of place with me is that kill in the cold open. You know, at first, it's just a simple cold open kill. Nothing really too crazy about it. It's pretty standard. But once you see the rest of the movie and you understand the motivations, that cold open kill really stands out as an outlier like it was just forced into there to have at the beginning of the movie because that's what people expected. I think for me personally, I would have rather have seen them either just start the movie with the cave-in or just start the movie with the kids and explain the legend later. That cold open kill wasn't really that necessary. Now in terms of the characters, there's not much else to really say either. They're all very stock and they're all very Canadian. Now typically in these kind of movies, you do have maybe one or two characters that do kind of stand a little bit above the rest. You know, they stand out. But here, they all just lack a distinctive personality and they do really just all blend together. But now we're going to jump to probably my biggest problem with this movie. So like I said before, these young kids or adults, whatever they're supposed to be, decide to hell with tradition and decide to have their own Valentine's Day party, and that's when Harry Warden shows up and starts killing them off one by one. 
Except the big reveal at the end of this movie is that it's not Harry Warden who is the killer because it is learned by the sheriff that Harry Warden had died five years prior to the events of this movie. It turns out that the killer is actually Axel. And why? Your guess is as good as mine. And that reveal of Axel as the killer is a pretty predictable one since he is really the only one that's never around when people are getting murdered. I mean, they do try to fake you out at the end when both he and TJ disappear, but it's not a really good fake out. But again, what are his motives? Going back to what I said earlier about Harry Warden killing the two supervisors responsible for that cave-in, it turns out that one of those supervisors was Axel's father, and he was murdered right in front of him as a child. So I guess that trauma is now why he kills? Now look, I'm all for show, don't tell, but damn, a little bit of an explanation here goes a long way. Because the whole time it's being set up that Harry Warden, or whoever it is, is killing because the town is choosing to forget about the miners that were trapped on Valentine's Day all those years ago. And they aren't heeding Harry's initial warnings. So when that reveal eventually does happen that it is Axel, I was expecting something along the lines of like, you know, Axel was Harry's son. And maybe he was killing because he felt like the town was disgracing his father because of what happened all those years ago, but... Nope. All we get is this bare-bones cryptic flashback that goes unexplained. Not only to us, the main audience, but also the main characters. Axel, why? And then it ends with him just running off into the mines like a madman, sequel baiting a sequel we never get. But yeah, that was essentially my bloody valentine, and I feel like the potential for a really great story is there, but they kind of just stayed on the surface with it and didn't dig deep enough to really unveil its full potential. And it does ultimately feel like a movie where they kind of came up with the title first, and then tried to retroactively fit a story around it, and not all the dots connected. Now before I get into my final grade, I'm going to tell you what my favorite and least favorite parts of this movie were. My favorite part is once they get down into the mine, through to the end of the movie. I feel like that is the strongest section of this film, and it's the part I enjoyed the most. And my least favorite part would have to be the reveal that Axel is the killer. And not because it was pretty predictable, it was the big WTF question mark left on how they revealed it and going virtually unexplained. Like I can buy him being the killer, but damn, give me and the characters some kind of motivation to work with. But overall, My Bloody Valentine comes out with a score of 78.5%, which means that is good enough for a C+. And to the left here, you could see the grading breakdown. I did give the story a B-, characters got a C+, and along with the direction, also had a C+. I felt like those two things were the weakest aspects of this movie. And the music gets a B-, which again, I didn't elaborate on in my breakdown. I thought the music was okay. However, special props to the song that closes out this movie called The Ballad of Harry Warden. You get a chance, go look this song up. It is freaking awesome. Overall, My Bloody Valentine doesn't do anything to really move that needle of the slasher genre one way or the other. I feel like it leans on those tropes and cliches a little bit too much, and maybe with a little bit of tweaking here and there, this probably, in my opinion, at least for my grading, probably would have been graded a B or higher. But don't let that grade of a C plus fool you into thinking that I thought this movie was bad. I still enjoyed it. I just try to grade these things as fairly and objectively as I possibly can. I am only human. But in terms of, you know, movies that came before this that set the template like Black Christmas, Halloween, Friday the 13th, My Bloody Valentine is still pretty good, but it's not on the level of those films. But anyway, what were your guys' thoughts on My Bloody Valentine? If you have seen it, post your grades below. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. Adios. Have a happy Valentine's Day. 
now, GTFO!